In the first version of uh, this video, uh, I made a serious mistake and uh, I'm leaving the video online just for reference, but um, there was something was complete nonsense. And uh, the fact was that I knew what was going to be the result. So I started with the result and worked myself to the front and I got lost somewhere. So uh, finally, the result is that um, and the result is correct. The result was correct in the uh, in the video, and all the discussion that I did there is correct. But uh, the start, the derivation of the formulas is uh, completely nonsense. So uh, I'm redoing this here, and I'll do this very quickly. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at uh, the at uh, uh, the uh, effects of noise and of uh, the band limitation that we use in the L2 framework. So uh, as usual, we assume that uh, we are trying to reconstruct a function f from radon data. Uh, we again, as usual, assume that the support, that the support of the function is in the unit circle. And uh, now, and of course, we have um, um, infinitely often, uh, dis infinitely many times differentiable functions. Function. Okay, uh, but this time we look at the uh, L2 norm and uh, we look at the uh, effect of reconstructing with the Ramlack filter. And I remind you what that means a little bit later. First of all, we choose a band limit omega and write f as uh, f omega plus f omega star. And f omega is the omega band limited version of f which I introduced. So it is the inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier transform of f when we restrict it to frequencies smaller than omega. And uh, this is exactly uh, the definition of that. Okay, and we call that the omega band limited version of f. And uh, f omega star in, the, in a way is the rest. So uh, that contains the frequencies beyond omega. Uh, due to Parseval, of course, we have that uh, the, uh, uh, the um, L2 norm of f omega star uh, goes to zero for omega to infinity. So that means the larger we choose omega, the smaller the norm of f omega star is going to be. Okay, um, now uh, we said uh, g is rf, so we are trying to reconstruct from radon data. But of course, as usual, we assume that there's some noise on it, and this time we assume additional noise. So uh, we said we, we assume that what's measured is G tilde, which is Rf plus n, and um, introducing our decomposition over here. This is nothing but Rf omega plus F omega star plus n, of course. Okay, so uh, all we have is G tilde. So we have to reconstruct from G tilde. And um, let me remind you of the formulas that we used for the implementation for uh, of uh, um, the filter back projection for the Ramlack filter. So first of all, we had that uh, capital V omega convolution with F is the same as R star, uh, small v omega uh, convolution with Rf, where capital V omega is nothing but R adjoint applied to V omega, so that's the back projection of V omega. Okay, we, due to the, um, uh, we, uh, uh, if we set uh, capital V omega hat of Xi as uh, one over two pi chi omega, oops, chi omega of Xi, where chi omega is the characteristic function in R2 of a ball with radius omega. I didn't, I don't know if I said that, of course I said uh, n equals to two here. And um, that's what we did for Ramlack. 
and uh, then we um, derived the formula that small v omega hat of psi has the form one over two pi times one over two times one over square root of two pi times the norm of psi. The constant over here is absolutely not important. Uh, the main thing is that this is bounded by a constant times omega. And that's, of course, wrong here. That's, of course, multiplied with the, uh, with the characteristic function of uh, norm psi and uh, of, the, of the interval um, of the interval minus omega to omega evaluated at norm of psi. That was our formula. Okay, and, and the main thing, of course, is that uh, via omega hat of psi is thus uh, bounded by a constant times norm psi, and uh, not times omega, excuse me. Okay, um, now uh, if omega is omega band limited, that's exactly how we defined it. So uh, we have that R star applied to V omega uh, convolved with R F omega due to our formula is exactly the same as capital V omega convolution with F omega. Uh, now, uh, this is writing this uh, using the convolution theorem, then uh, this is the inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier transform of these two over here, inserting the Fourier, the convolution theorem. This is nothing but V omega hat times F omega hat times uh, two pi. But uh, since uh, uh, this in in uh, in the uh, interval um, in the <laughs> in the ball of radius omega, this is one over two pi, so that cancels. So in the ball of radius omega, this is f omega hat, and outside of the ball of of uh, uh, of, uh, f, oh, of radius omega everything is zero anyway. So the inverse Fourier transform of this is nothing but F omega hat tilde, and that's F omega. And that's exactly the old uh, calculation that we already did. I just wanted to remind you here. Okay, um, now all we can do, however, is um, we don't have exact data. And uh, also our function is not really band limited. So all we can do is apply the adjoint to the omega convolved with what we have. So that's the G tilde, and that's Rf omega plus Rf omega star plus N. Uh, and of course, we are interested in the difference to the true F, and that was F omega plus F omega star. And this time we do it in uh, the Euclidean norm, in the L2 norm. Okay, uh, now uh, doing the obvious decomposition, we write this as R star uh, V omega um, convolved with R F omega. So that's the first term over here, minus F omega, two norm squared, plus uh, there's one term R adjoint R F omega star, V omega convolved with R F omega star. So that's the second term. Now then we have the noise effect, and that's something like R star V omega convolved with N. And then we have this F, F omega star over here. Okay, uh, so uh, we have four error terms, and uh, let's discuss these error terms individually. So uh, uh, the first one, of course, this one is of course zero. That's just what we uh, what we proved or what I reminded you of. Uh, if f um, is um, if um, since f omega is band limited, this is exact. So this over here is zero. Okay, that's great. So uh, the first term over the first error term is zero. Now um, this is the most obvious error term over here. Of course, we are returning, uh, that's in the definition of the band of uh, the filter back projection, we are always returning a band limited uh, function. So we will never be able to reach any frequencies beyond omega. So f omega star, definitely that's a model error that uh, we would expect to have. We, can, we just can't reach it. So uh, that appears here and that's completely normal. But of course, if omega goes to infinity, this one would go to zero. 
Okay, um, now let's look at the effect of the noise. Obviously, that's this uh, term over here. So that's our adjoint applied to V omega convolved with N. Now, uh, we already proved that our adjoint is um, continuous. So uh, I'm just taking the, the norm of that adjoint here. Then this can be estimated by a constant times the norm of V omega convolved with N. Again, two norm squared. And um, now, uh, again, using Parseval and the convolution theorem, uh, this we, we can take the Fourier transform over here. Then the convolution the theorem tells us that this is the same as uh, um, v, v omega hat times n hat times the square root of 2 pi. Again, we, uh, remember that uh, this is a convolution in R. And uh, so the constant that appears here is square root of 2 pi. So taking that out and observing that uh, v omega hat is limited by a constant times omega. And I, I just realized I dropped that constant, which I already had. That was the 1 over 2 pi and so on. And it plays no role here. Times uh, the norm, uh, times the uh, L2 norm of n. So uh, what we have here is that this that the effect of the noise is bounded by a constant times omega squared times the uh, L2 norm of the noise. And that's exactly what we would expect. When omega goes up, then that's nice because then uh, the norm of F omega star goes to zero. But on the other hand, um, the noise, the, um, the noise, the effect of the noise is getting bigger. And uh, so that means that um, we have to, this is a regularization parameter, right? If we choose it uh, too large in this case, uh, then the effect of the error will be too large. If we choose it too small, then the model error will be too small, will, will, will be large. So um, of course we will have to adapt it um, and that's exactly what we expected. Okay, um, there's one more term, which may be a little bit strange because and that's this term over here. And uh, let's look at that. So that's the two norm of the back projection of the omega uh, convolved with RF omega star. Uh, now, uh, we, again, uh, we, uh, um, this is exactly the same as V omega, capital V omega convolved with F omega star. That's again our old formula from above. We can take the Fourier transform due to Parseval as we always do. And uh, again, the convolution theorem tells us, well, this time we have a constant of two pi since this is a two dimensional convolution. So this is two pi squared times V omega hat times F omega star hat Fourier transform. Okay, now uh, let's look at these two guys. And uh, now V omega hat is a function that has its support in the ball around zero uh, with uh, radius omega. And um, in fact, it's one there and zero everything everywhere else. And this one here is, um, is a function that where the, that has a support away from uh, the, from that ball. So ball around zero with radius omega. So uh, the supports just don't intersect. And of course, so this is zero what we have here since this is just a normal product. And uh, so this is zero. So that's great, right? I mean, that's, that's really great. So uh, there's no error. So this uh, term does not contribute to the error, but there's a serious problem with that. And um, when we did the implementation, we assumed that um, the, uh, the data function that we're dealing with is band limited. This is, of course, not the fact for RF omega star because RF omega star only contains frequencies away from omega. So in fact, this is going to be a high frequency function. And so definitely our implementation will not be exact, but 
it, it, instead we will um, we will expect that there's serious aliasing and for the aliasing effect, uh, remember the sound example that we did. So we will um, we will expect that there's aliasing. And uh, we we'll have to expect artifacts. And that's exactly the artifacts I started with. Um, you remember these ringing artifacts. That's exactly this term that comes up here. So it's mathematically, it would be OK that that term pl uh, plays mathematically, that term plays no role. But in, in fact, in, uh, in, in reality, uh, the implementation is not exact here, and it will cause serious problems. And um, that is exactly the reason why Ramlak is not the clinical choice. I mean, probably you've asked yourself, well, it seems that Ramlak is perfect, right? It uh, takes care of the fact that uh, this over here is, um, is, uh, uh, gets zero. So, so mathematically, Ramlak is the optimal way of defining everything. The problem is that in implementation, that will cause errors, and we will have to diminish the effects of, uh, of, um, um, of the aliasing effects. Excuse me. We'll have to diminish the aliasing effects. And that's exactly the reason why slowly decaying filters are, in practice, used in the hospital and in commercial CT scanners. OK, so uh, that was the correction. And uh, I hope it's understandable and correct this time.